session of UK Uncut Court is about to begin. Please, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Take your seats, ladies and gentlemen. This is a sit-down protest, after all. <laughs> My name is Lucy, and I am the clerk of the court. I'm playing several characters, actually. It will get very confusing, I promise you. I'm going to tell you how this is going to work. Welcome to our piece of street theatre today. We have our defence solicitors of... Here we are, give them a chair. Go on, warm up. Warm up. Give them a chair. Our esteemed, uh, my esteemed colleagues here to my right. And here we have the very dishonourable Injustice Minister, Christopher Grayling, in the dock today, ladies and gentlemen. And can I introduce to you our esteemed judge, the UK Uncut Judge. Please, a warm round of applause. This is one judge that you definitely want to meet. Okay, on a protest. Okay. Order! And we'll be calling different witnesses in to speak about their experience of legal aid and why we have to do absolutely everything to save it. You are the public gallery, you are the jury, you are the judge. Please, we're about to begin. Come on, let's get on with it then. Have right. a good all day, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> the charge against Grayling, that our client is not, ac not acting for the good of the nation. That he is not serving in the interests of the people. And his only defense is that this is ideological. So first of all, we're gonna hear from our first witness, Mohammed from Disabled People Against the Cuts. A warm round of applause to the witness box, please. Hi everybody, my name is Mohammed and I will be talking about my case and the legal aid which I have used. Um, my council, which is London Borough of Newham, actually decided to <coughs> change the layout of payment with the tax you changing the tax trial paving to break international guidance. Do you know who didn't want to follow the national guidance? And they changed the colour of it. So what I decided to do, I actually took them to the court, which I used a legal aid. <laughs> and it was so stressing to go through up to three and a half years the legal battle. Where do you think all the costs that they have to cover to where they were coming from? They were coming from to the public purse and that money goes towards the legal aid scheme. And basically what the government is doing now is actually cutting the legal aid which is so important for disabled people but not only disabled people but also for people that are not able to meet the cost of those illegal responsibilities. The legal aid scheme is so important that if you take away the, the rights and choices and freedom from so many people in this country, and secondly and lastly, I would like to say to the government, it needs to get it act together now. Thank you. Well, Mr. Grayling, what do you have to say on the matter? 
Everything's absolutely fine. Who is? 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 Mr. Grayling says that the public has lost confidence in the system. Our client, Justice Minister, the Right Dishonourable Mr. Christopher Grayling, has received lots of letters and emails from people concerned with about legal entitlement to people with an overwhelming sense of entitlement. My client says that there are prisoners, in fact, getting legal aid to argue they should have a different cell, and even migrants receiving civil legal aid. Our next witness to the box. Do we have a volunteer to read out a testimony for us? Someone. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Round of applause, please. The government's proposals will mean that in cases where legal aid has been used in the past, it will no longer be available to help the prisoner whose learning disabilities prevented him from access to a risk reduction programme. He languished in prison as a result. Because of legal aid, his lack of access to the programmes he was required to complete to help secure his release could be challenged. And a vulnerable young woman who said she was assaulted by the, uh, sorry, uh, by the police during an arrest her immigration status was not clear. She couldn't afford an immigration solicitor to help her, but because of legal aid, she was assisted to make a complaint to the police and to consider commencing civil proceedings against the police for assault. Thank you very much indeed. Now, what do you have to say about that, Grayling? Piffle, absolute piffle. Piffle! Piffle! piffle. 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 And now may I bring our third witness? Call the third witness. <laughs> Ruth, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to the court of UK and Cut. Thank you. I'm Ruth, I'm um, a Unite Broach Secretary and our branch represents people who work in not-for-profit organisations with legal aid. So that's law centres, advice agencies, CABs. We've seen since April legal aid be taken away for people with employment problems, with immigration problems, with debt problems, with welfare benefit problems. Since then, our doors have been really full of people who simply can't get help. And I'd like perhaps to tell three very short stories of people who needed that legal aid. One woman had two kids, she was a single parent, one of her sons was disabled. She kept his benefits because they were his benefits in order to provide some breaks for him and from her as he was older, he was a teenager. She was wrongly accused of having those in savings and having therefore defrauded the benefit system. So not only did she face the loss of that um, security for her child, but also she was accused of stealing from her own son and we were able to win that case, but it took a specialist benefits worker under legal aid to achieve that. We've recently seen someone who can't get legal aid now because it's been taken away in employment. An older guy, security guard, his company was taken over. He was a salaried worker. He'd been he, you know, able to meet his bills from his earnings. He suddenly moved from being salaried to on a zero hours contract. He's not been given enough hours. His pay has been cut by two thirds. He now can't afford to get a lawyer to take his employer to court. Um, and finally... So, we're not made of money. No, we're not made of money. Oh, do shut up! story is a young woman who fled serious abuse at home um, and I'd like to say she was living on the kindness of strangers but the people that took her in were not kind and were, she was subject to further exploitation. A really determined young woman who's stuck at college which you know, in the long run is obviously going to enable her to earn her own living, to be an independent adult but her immigration, she was brought over to the UK as a child, so she was a migrant receiving civil legal aid. 
her parents um, hadn't uh, regularised her status. Because of the abuse, she wasn't able to get documents from them. And without legal aid, she wouldn't have been able to continue her education. She's now doing very, very well. But it just shows why legal aid is so important. Thank you. Well, Mr. Grayling, there seems to be rather a lot of evidence mounting up against you. We have uh, we have another witness statement that is coming in through a sort of video link, not really. Um, Sophie from Deepak is actually locked on over there. I've never seen such uh, events in a courtroom before. When you're ready, Sophie, go for it, love. Hello, um. Is it on? Is it on? Yeah. Hello. Uh, I'm here as a witness for the Independent Living Fund, which this government has seen fit to close in two years' time in 2015. Um, we're back in court on the 14th of this month to challenge the consultation process, which is highly sus, basically, and we wouldn't have been able to bring that challenge without legal aid. So, there you go. witness um, is actually on a mobile phone at the moment. Uh, <laughs> okay. there you go. This is our final witness of this current session and then after this session we will ask you to deliberate on what ground? Denied! We get paid far too much to come out with rubbish like that. Here we go. Here is Ellie, our final witness. Uh, please, a warm round of applause. Welcome to court. Thank you. Hello. Um, I want to tell you a story about when I was arrested during a UK and Cup protest, actually. Um, I was arrested a couple of years ago in uh, Fortnum and Mason with lots of other people, who I'm sure some of you are here today. Hello. <laughs> um, Nothing to be proud of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, um, quiet railing. And, um... Uh, basically, it was quite a scary experience because the police didn't behave very well. No offence, guys. Um, first of all, they uh, locked us up for, uh, for 24 hours without uh, letting us see solicitors. Uh, they took us to a small, they took us to a small room in the middle of the night, about 3:30 in the morning. They woke us up uh, from our cells without um, any warning and took us to a little room and made us take our clothes off, which they then seized and kept for over a year. Um, and then they made us put on overalls. And then, um, and then after that, uh, they um, one a, a couple of police officers um, came to my house and told me that they were watching me, so I shouldn't think about going on, on any more protests. Um, and it was basically nine months of being sort of harassed and intimidated by the police, and obviously quite a sort of um, stressful 24 hours of the actual arrest as well. And I wouldn't have been able to um, kind of come through it and be here today to protest again if it wasn't for my solicitors, Bindmans. Uh, who I'm sure have represented some people here, <laughs> who, um, who really went to amazing lengths to uh, um, to look after me and defended me to the police and wrote to the police uh, to tell them to stop harassing me and um, had lots of defendants meet meetings off their own backs and were generally just really excellent and really made me feel like I wasn't alone and that I could fight it and I could win and my charges did get dropped in the end as well. Um, yay! <laughs> Um, and if legal aid, and it was all paid for through legal aid, so if legal aid hadn't existed, I probably would have had to have taken the duty solicitor. I would have none of that. I don't know if I would have ever had my charges dropped. I would not have known that I could have told the police that coming to my house and harassing me was illegal. And I probably wouldn't be here today protesting because it might have scared me off. And um, now, more than ever, we really need to protest because of all the shit that this government is throwing at everybody. Yeah! to because of the terrible things that we are we're facing but we have a right to and you can see here there's a lot of police here that are intimidating us and trying to make us feel like criminals because we're doing what is our democratic right and standing up 
against this uh, shitty, unelected, really, government. Um, so, uh, you know, and that's our democratic right, and we mustn't ever feel as though uh, we have, we, uh, we're doing something wrong by being here, because we're not. People, people died and fought so that we could stand here and stand up for what we believe in. And uh, legal aid is really important in uh, making sure that we're supported in the law uh, when we do this. So um, that's why I think it's really good and important that we're here today. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much uh, indeed. Uh, that is the end of our witness statements. No doubt you have your own experience of how you've been able to access uh, legal uh, support through the legal aid system. We're keen to hear more perspectives. We're keen for people to share them with each other. So as our judge steps back for a moment to uh, deliberate over what uh, they have heard, uh, we're going to talk about other things. We're going to talk about a whole number of other forms of alternative forms of justice. We have music, we have poetry. So I'm going to hand over to our facilitator. Uh, right now, thank you very much, judge and jury. Uh, we'll be keen to hear what you think we need to do with grading. We'll come around and talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. So yeah, our judge and our jury are going to go out to deliberate the verdict on Chris Grayling. And while they do, uh, we've just got a few different things that are going to happen to keep us entertained. You know, juries can go out for days. We're hoping this jury doesn't go out that long. But we need to keep entertained while they do go out. So the first thing um, that we've got is a legal aid briefing, uh, not legal aid, a legal briefing for us all from the lovely folks at Green and Black Cross. Um, where are you? They'll be here in a minute. So uh, while we wait for them to arrive, uh, what are our initial feelings about Chris Grayling? Do we think he is blue? Okay, guilty. Okay, so. Yeah. <laughs> well educated. Put him in prison, someone says, okay. <laughs> Hang him. Oh, we don't have corporal punishment in the UK right now, but you know. <laughs> so our Green and Black Cross people? Where have they gone? I saw them. Two minutes. <laughs> They're just having a quick deliberation. First of all, I guess, before they start, has everyone got their bus card that the lovely people at Green and Black Cross have brought us? It should look like this. Everyone got one? <laughs> if you haven't got one, then there's a lovely legal observer in an orange jacket who can bring one around to you now. It's got all the information you need. I'm sure they'll be going over it in a minute. But uh, if you can have a read and put one in your pocket just in case, that would be great. So wave at our legal observer if you need one. <laughs> um, well, I suppose I can tell you what else is coming up after we've had all of the legal aid briefing. We're going to have a workshop, a very brief workshop. We're not, we're not sitting, we're not going for three-hour workshops um, on alternative modes of justice. So we're fighting for a legal aid system here because we believe that everyone should have the right to access our justice system, no matter how much money you have. But that's not saying that we think our justice system is the best thing ever. There are many things wrong with our justice system. There, there are lots of different alternatives that we could think about and think about. Um, how we take action and what we do and what an alternative form of justice might look like. So that's going to come up after that. Then we're going to have some poets and some music and then we'll have our mock trial verdict. Um, the judge will come in and give us our verdict. Okay, great. It looks like Green and Black Cross are ready. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, I'm going to hand over to you. Okay guys, so just a quick announcement. If people feel like they want to sit in the road and block the road, it'd be great if we could just make sure we're spread out um, so we're supporting all the people. Deepak over here and our lovely Lady Justices. Yeah, so just spread out a bit further. That would be great. Thank you. I'm going to hand over to Green and Black. Hello. Come on, move people. Move, move, move. On this side and on that side. Um, can everyone hear me? Great. Okay. Um, Nearer? Okay. Um, quick question. Who here has heard of Green and Black Cross before? Yeah. Oh, cool. Can anyone tell me what, what it is that we do? Or who we are? Thank you. Give out bus cards. Give out bus cards. Yes. Not today, though. Anything else? Give legal aid. We give legal aid? No. No, not give legal aid. Assistance. Assistance. Yes. Assistance. Yeah. So. Things we're not, we're not lawyers, um, we're not trained legal professionals, uh, 
we are there as a movement activists who do movement support stuff around the law. Uh, and we often do legal observing. The legal observers here today are from Haldane. Where are poets that we're going to? Um, and I'm going to start making in place yeah. in the necessary arrangements that I okay. can make. Okay, we might not have any poets here. Yeah. 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 If you're tall, you can get some good video. Yeah. <laughs> Individuals are going to go around. Can we give a little bit of It's never in your favour. And don't listen to them either. Um, stop and search. You are never under any obligation ever to give any details or say anything when you're being stopped and searched. That's, uh, they will try and get your name at you. You never have to. Um, they have to give you, uh, have reasonable suspicion that you've done something illegal, that you possess something that they have, uh, that they can search you for. But that's to tell you what it is. Um, thanks. And, uh, if they want to cheekily go through your wallet to find out your name, that's a very cheeky thing that they try and do sometimes. Uh, we suggest hold, hold on. Yeah, are those people talking to the police? No, they, that's fine. Um, uh, you can demonstrate to them what you have on your person. You don't have to let them go through your wallet. And, uh, and you can show them that you don't have any razor blades, which obviously everyone is always carrying all the time. Okay, but that might not be sufficient. You might get arrested. Um, what's the main thing to do when you get arrested? No comment! Right, well, why am I even here? Brilliant. Okay, no comment. No comment to all police questions. It never works in your favour to talk to the police. Secondly, you have the right to a solicitor. If, you're the, if they bother to take you to the police station, you have the right to a solicitor. There are some that hang around the police station called duty solicitors. Um, no offence, but don't use the duty solicitor. Do not use them. They don't know what they're talking about when it comes to process related stuff. So we recommend you go with a good firm of solicitors uh, as identified on the bus card. Are there enough bus cards to go around? No! Alright, well, 
We've had a no, we've had a yes, so let's make sure that people saying yes get the cards to the people who are saying no. Alright, um, no judiciousness to use a good one. We don't work on commission. Um, they might uh, try to interview you, again, no comment. No casual chats, no, no friendly conversations in the band. It's all just trying to gather information about you. Um, okay, talking of gathering information. There's been some recent occurrences of the police furiously arresting large groups of people um, and uh, using this as a way of getting their name and address. Uh, because people are under the uh, impression that you have to give your name and address to the police once you've been arrested. Now, you don't have to do that. Sometimes it can help you get out of the police station more quickly if you give your name and address. But if everyone refuses to give their name and address, uh, then they might just turn around and go, you know what, we can't be asked for having arrested this couple of hundred people. Uh, and we clearly have no grounds for prosecuting them, so we're just going to let them go. Who knows? Don't hold me to it. But you do, they, basically they used to get your name and address by searching you, and then people found out that you didn't have to give your name when they were searching you. So they started kettling people and using uh, kettles to get people's names and address, and then they were challenged in court using legal aid. <laughs> and my God, they lost. So they now can't use kettles to get your name and address. So they've started arresting everyone and using that as a way of getting your name and address. You do not have to give your name and address when you are at the police station. It's not a criminal offence not to. And you may wish to just call their bluff and wait till they actually bother to charge you with an offence, which seems pretty unlikely in the current circumstances. Okay, um, any questions or any comments on things I've left out because I wasn't really prepared for this. They can't search you on suspicion of being someone else without a reasonable suspicion that you've committed a crime. Any other questions? Can they put their hands in your pockets? Uh, you do not have to comply with the search, but they can use reasonable force to make the search effective. So yes, they can put their hands in your pockets. When you are arrested and taken to the police station, they can take your fingerprints, DNA and photograph and they can use reasonable force to do that. Obviously, if they don't have your name, it's not much help to them. <laughs> Say it again. We have a speculation that obstruction of the highway is not recordable and therefore they can't... No, no, it's not more than speculation. Obstruction of the highway is a non-recordable offence. That's some legal jargon, which is why we don't do self-representation. It means, though, that they can't take your fingerprints and DNA uh, even if they arrest you for obstruction of the highway. Thank you. Also, legal aid's really good. I looked, when I got picked for something last year, I, uh, I saw the evidence against me, I thought, bloody hell, that's weak. Um, and so I, you know, I went through the process and got legal aid. But if I'd had to pay for a lawyer, I'd never have bothered. Because it was a laughable, uh, laughable bit of evidence. Comes to court, my legal aid funded lawyer has gone through an extensive process of finding witnesses, got them there, Four people came and testified in my defense. The judge acquitted me by the slimmest of margins, so it was actually my bit. Even when it looks like your evidence, uh, their evidence is crap, uh, apparently the judges tend to be on their side, so it's worth getting a lawyer. Um, that's why we're still with legal aid, yes. Okay, I'm going to give this mic back to someone else now, unless there are any last questions about legal stuff. Of course, you can find a legal observer and ask them questions at any time, and bus cards will be being handed out. There's some there being held up in a nice pink, yellow, blue colour. Go and get a bus card if you haven't got one already. Yes. Thank you very much, Green and Black Cross, and thanks for all the great work you guys do at all the protests that we're on. Yeah, big round of applause for the Green and Black Cross. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is um, talk.
talk about alternative forms of justice. And in doing that, we're going to try and decide what our verdict is in our court case. So, do we have the people ready to do the alternative forms of justice? Ladies in gold? Alternative justice workshop. to outsource public services, to be a director of the board of those public services, and to make uh, approximately three or four hundred thousand pounds a year after I've retired from politics when we lose the election in 2015. Brilliant. Time again, this government oh, has signaled its contempt for the principle of access to justice. You are carrying out an assault on the foundations of the democratic system. Your proposals are deliberately designed to further marginalize the most vulnerable people in our society. You and your government continually refuse to listen, which is why these good citizens are here today. What you are doing will have a devastating effect on the access to justice, and we will stop you. make companies pay their fair share instead of punishing people like the good people here. UK Uncut. It's about the cuts that are going to be to our access to legal aid. Oh, yeah. so people's ability to access yeah. legal aid to fight their case, you know. People who are poor. And yeah. it's, it's the oh, there are tests, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's going to disenfranchise anyone who's yeah. immigration it's status. Also disabled as well. Oh, is that right? Disabled yeah. people, yeah. yeah. Um, All kinds of people. Yeah. 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 It's really terrible what's happening. Yeah. It's just going to be one of the rich and the poor. Sorry? The Virginia government to do that seem to be. Uh, mm. That would go all the place, doesn't it? It's mm. going to happen in Australia too. Are you here on the I'll be on Just put the minister on trial. Yeah. Piece of street the street here. Yeah. Oh, I see. Right, That's right. really good. It's all the They walk all over you. Oh, right, really? They will, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to stand up. Yeah, that's right. right. Oh. If you don't really stand up, then it's you know, they'll turn even into even a second coat or things. You've got to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did they have? What did they vote? Huh? Did they have a vote? Who? Oh yeah, they, they uh, charged him guilty. No, no, a vote about the protest. Huh? About the protest. I thought... Oh, snap. 
feel them on. The right for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? Can you have snacks? Are they what? No, I just said we're going to get past them, but they're moving. Oh, yeah, they're moving in now. Yeah, the kettle on. Yeah, they're moving in. 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 Just sat down. <laughs> I shouldn't be in your situation, I feel it's a little bit dodgy. Yeah. I was getting worried too. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it's a good idea because I mean like you did you, we did an hour mm. and we did the march. And, we, and you just don't want to end up back in prison. 